Hello, Kajem Arteshev. You're all very welcome. Uh, we're here in Studio 2 in Derry, and I'm going to play a couple of hornpipes, and uh, I hope you enjoy them. These are very old hornpipes, the Buck from the Mountain and MacParkland style. So, Shoga Horn Fipa, Buck of Chileva, August Steed by Carhalin, August. Uh, this is a flute, of course. I'd very like the tin whistle. <laughs> so maybe if you're a whistle player and watching this, you'll maybe uh, get onto the flute at some stage. And uh, this is the first tune I'm going to play it, uh, as I would normally play it, and then I'll break it down slowly for you. So this is the, um, the buck from the mountain. <laughs> This is my uh, first um, lesson with you, uh, Harja. When you're learning a tune for the first time and it attracts you, that it has some sort of a, an appeal to you, rather than just bursting in to try and play the tune, I always suggest that you should listen over to the tune and hum it in your head. So while I'm playing that, the best thing you should be doing now is to, um, you can record it, maybe on a, on a phone or whatever, and you could have it and you could be listening to it for a while before you actually attempt to play it. So I'll break it down slowly for you in case you missed any parts of it, but I'll play it really slowly now for you. And I expect you to be going So we'll try it again, just play at normal hornpipe speed. There, there are people who play the hornpipes very slowly, especially in Derry here um, for the fish, where you would have heavy shoes doing twice the amount of work. If you're playing it like the shoes we on diddle dum diddle dum diddle diddle dum 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 Whereas if you're playing it like this, it's a lighter verse, it's a, light, a lighter way of playing it. So there's only da, 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 da. so there's fewer marked notes there. If you're uh, so if you're doing a lot of crotchet and a lot of notes, a lot of heavy uh, dancing, that's when you play it slowly. So at a fest, you would get a play like that. But and if you're sitting in the house playing, you don't you wouldn't play it that slow. You'd usually play it around this. Um, <laughs> Part of it. The second part is. 
do you make it interesting for yourself then if you're playing, say yourself and a friend, say you have two flutes playing together or a flute and a whistle. You play it that way through first and then the second time you might want to, or even the third time, you might want to play a few long notes and the fact that you have an opportunity there to be playing see but with my F that's D E F with my F finger I'm using that as to do a little cut a little roll Of music in that you're not going to weigh off the notes, you're not going to weigh off the scale or playing. It's actually within the strict concept, the rugged concept of a tune, that you're staying within those particular notes and ornamenting them. So the first time you'd play it, you would play it as we said earlier. traditional music need needs is a bit of an oomph that's a, a bit of power behind it and nya which is a, a, a magical sort of presence in it which is because that's ornamented at the beginning and you have that in your head at the back of your head this part of your brain saying Okay, you've got your dotted notes here, your uh, which you can up to B and up to the A, but actually what all you're doing there is just going up as far as the A. So say that A part A1, A2, B1, e, B2, when you ornament the A1, you might leave the A2 alone. Or if you ornament the B1, you'd leave the B2 alone. Or on the other side of that, if you have simple version as we did, uh, just playing a long note there for three beats, then you get... done a little bit of magic on it if you play it nice and gently the first bit Now, 
You can hear the flute is sounding better as it goes along. So um, normally you would warm the flute up for a while. What I would do is blow notes through it like that. But as we're playing it here, the, it gets easier to play as you go along. So don't be, if you're coming in on a cold day um, and you, you're just back from school or just back from work and you have a lot of stuff in your head, it might take 10 minutes to get into the tune. So don't give up. <laughs> from the mountain recorded in December 1925 by John McKenna of uh, County Leitrim and he recorded those in America and the tune that he played along with it he called it McPartland style now it's normally known as the Greencastle Hornpipe uh, the, the next one I'm going to show you that first one is um, the, the the minstrel's fancy it's also called but McKenna called it um, the buck from the mountain because he lived in the mountainous country in County Leitrim. And the Greencastle Hornpipe or McPartland style, the next tune I'm going to put, put with that, because normally tunes go in pairs. So if you're starting music, you, they call the set. So a set would be the Buck from the Mountain, a McPartland style, that type of thing. Um, you'll see it on session.org. You'll see various um, pieces of it. But you may not see this bit of information that in December 1906, Pat McPartland died in a place called Ballyfarnan in County Roscommon. And John McKenna recorded this in his memory many years later in December 1925. So you think from 1906, December till December 1925. So you're talking there, there's 18, 19 years involved. And he saw Pat dance at a sports in Arigna. And McKenna, before we began his great recording, uh, his, his his career in America as a recording artist in, in USA he had seen this dancer McPartland was my great grandfather his daughter my granny Bridget um, was lived in Thames Street Belfast and um, she passed her music on to my mother and her dancing as well too and that was uh, Bridget McPartland Mrs McDermott Rowe her name would be as my granny but his other daughter Nora would have been an aunt of Josie McDermott the uh, great Roscommon Sligo uh, flute player and that would be uh, a, a man who be I've learned a lot of music off over the years I met him when I was 17 so it's nice to have someone that, that the connections there so there's a double connection not only that that John McKenna had seen my great-grandfather dance to it but uh, the music really has to mean something to you when you're playing it so and lucky with those sort of roots but for yourselves you're getting it from from a source and it's important in your own locality you go and search for people who have the music that will pass on sets for you no matter whereabouts you're living you know if you have access to a traditional musician so so the second tune is McPartland style I did earlier with the with the buck from the mountain I play it slowly for you so I expect that you'd be humming this tune if it's the first time you heard it some people do know this is the Greencastle Hornpipe and 
there's a slight difference and I'm going to show you what it is uh, in a short while but this is the tune <laughs> That's the first part of it. The second part of it is. Now, you'll have noticed I've done something with the flute. That is, it's in a 4-4, um, four, four, it's played in, in G major. I'm also playing some high notes there. So I'm actually turning the flute slightly towards me. So I'm turning the head slightly towards me, but not that much. You're talking about maybe a millimeter or two. Because if you don't play it, if you, if you don't turn it towards you and play, and play high notes, it goes out of tune. So to keep it in tune, you see, you've slightly turned it slightly towards you. So. to do this as well too as a little variation in the first part of it instead of playing which are all no, uh, dotted notes crotchet so do this it actually goes doing there you're keeping your lips tight your G finger I'll put this up for you later on you'll be able to see I mean there's McCartland style there can you see it that's I think you should be able to see that so when I'm the first part of it here, I'm doing a little run. You could freeze that, obviously, you can go back and freeze it, but I'll put it up at the very end for you. So, as I said, you and your friend, your fiddle playing friend, or banjo, or accordion, or whoever you're playing with, a uh, tin whistle player, obviously, an instrument that's balanced along with you. So, flutes and fiddles, and flutes and pipes, or flutes and whistles go very well together as do banjos and accordions and harps and um, quite a lot of instruments but and concertinas and accordions and concertinas and uh, pipes go very well together as well reed family so the flute and fiddle go very well together so i was associate this with <laughs> I'm just doing a little run. So if you practice those, so down to your G, uh, B, the A. So basically, you can down the scale. Back down to the bottom B. So you have a B, A, G, down to the bottom B. But what, what's that little sound in there? It's, it's an ornamentation. I'm doing a little roll with my with my F finger. And again, because 
playing a high E there. You have to keep your lips very tight. So it's good practice for you. It's a good way to get to know yourself playing the flute because it's not like an accordion or a concertina. You can just produce a note right away. With this here, it's like blowing into a bottle. You have to, the, the, the better you manage the embouchure here, the sweeter it'll be. And what happens in the middle of winter when you're not getting those sweet notes? Well, just keep playing it. And play the bottom D up to the top D, E up to the top E. unless your friend and yourself that this worked out beforehand so again I'm using the G finger and the F finger G finger down F finger to create it see see that finger there the G one different from what you hear at the rest of the country so the green castle hornpipe this is based on the version that john mckenna recorded as i say in december 1925 instead of he did and i presume that my great grandfather may have done a little shuffle of a dance diddly dum and hornpipes at the turn of the century turn of the 20th century were very popular and right through the 19th century the further back you go you will find for the historians among you that a lot of songs were written to hornpipe rhythm like in Chan Van Wacht Tana Frankie Chatter Salers and Chan Van Wacht you know a lot of tunes were written to hornpipe rhythm so hornpipes were very very popular not as popular nowadays people are just tuned into playing uh, jigs and reels which is why we're going through these so that's McParkland's style the first one uh, was um, the book from the mountain which is um, a lovely little tune uh, the minstrel's fancy so that's the first one again which now you can freeze your screen or screenshot there key of D major and there we are, Shanae, Book from the Mountain. And if you'd like to freeze the other one, screenshot it, freeze it. Sounds like a Christmas turkey, but here we go. McPartland style. Okay. I think that's quite clear now, yeah. There we go, perfect. 4-4 four, four, again, 4-4 four, four rhythm in the key of G major and I play the two of them together now just to finish off. I hope you've enjoyed our little time together, two hornpipes, the Buck from the Mountain and McParkland style. Wumsa Marcus O'Morahu from me 
I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Good and Kia Dorella. Until the next time, Slano Gusbana. <laughs>